Hello. So thank you for having me here. Um, so the talk is entitled Malware Goes to the Movies. So just to give a little bit history about the talk and how it came about, um, one summer day my wife asked me to download a movie from the internet and I fired up a torrent client, went made myself a cup of tea and went about my business. An hour later I came back and was very happy the movie downloaded. I double clicked on the movie and I got a strange pop-up saying I'm missing a bunch of codecs. So I thought, well, that's strange. I'm not missing any codecs. And being in a security profession, I was paranoid and decided to investigate a little bit more. And this talk is about what I discovered. Um, so the outline of a talk is as follows. Um, so first I'll give you an overview about how malware spreads through image, music, and video files. Then we're going to look at some malware uh, media trends. Uh, what are the types of attacks that people are using? How does a malware spread? What are some of the statistics about the spread of malware through the media files? Then we're going to uh, look at some attack vectors and detailed case studies. And finally, we will conclude the talk by uh, examining how to actually protect yourself, how to make modifications to your system uh, to prevent this type of, these types of attacks from happening. Um, but you know, before I begin, let me just do a quick poll by a raise of hands who here has ever watched a video or downloaded a video from uh, the internet. So I have. Um, so a couple of people are shy, but I'm sure they, uh, they did download the video. Um, okay, how about music files? Did anybody ever download music from the internet by a show of hands? So again, same people are shy, and uh, I'm sure everybody downloaded image files from the internet. So, uh, you know, the question is why use media to spread malware? And the answer is obvious, because everybody downloads music, everybody downloads videos, everybody looks at images on the internet. So, you know, if you look at some statistics, um, just in December alone, according to CNN, in 2009, 14.3 billion videos were viewed in America just in the month of December. Also, if you look at the uh, screenshots on the right, a lot of music companies are very worried about the CD, DVD business because people no longer buy CDs and DVDs online. They just download the music off the internet. So, for example, in Britain alone, according to The Guardian, uh, 7 million people at least use uh, illegal music downloads from the internet. Also, just, you know, if you do a simple statistic, you type in Angelina Jolie in Google image search, you get 5.6 million images of Angelina Jolie. How many of those images are legitimate? <coughs> and how many of them could potentially be using some type of attack to infect your computer? So the numbers are fairly staggering. Everybody looks at images, everybody looks at music, everybody views videos online. So it's only natural that the bad guys are gonna try to use these um, methods of propagating the malware to infect your computer. So uh, in my company, uh, we do security awareness training. So during the security awareness trainings, I show them the picture on the right. And the picture has four parts and each part corresponds to an action. And I ask people, do you think it's safe to do it? So on the left hand uh, upper corner, you see you get a pop-up saying update to iTunes. So you get an update. And almost everybody who I ask thinks it's safe, almost 98% of the people. It's generally safe. Um, then I ask them, okay, let's say there's an ugly looking screensaver that your friend saved, uh, sent you, and you want to install that screensaver on your computer. Do you think it's safe to do? And only 10% of people think it's safe to install a screensaver. It's, it's a program that you install on your computer, so people are naturally getting more educated and becoming more distrustful. Um, then on the right-hand bottom corner, I say, okay, what about an internet accelerator? Let's say you come across a web page which tells you, here's an internet accelerator, you download it, and it makes your computer a lot more fast, a lot faster. And nobody, nobody thinks it's safe. They still do it, but during the security awareness, they think it's not safe. And then I show them the uh, left bottom corner, which says, you go to a friend's blog, and there's a YouTube movie embedded on a friend's blog. Is it safe to look at the movie? And at that point, you know, eyeballs start rolling, people are not sure, uh, but they wake up usually during the presentation, and some of them say yes, some of them say no, so roughly it's a 50-50% breakdown. And most of those people actually 
IT professionals, they know what they're doing. They're not an average user. They work with computers on a daily basis. So out of those people, 50% think that YouTube movies on a friend's blog are perfectly safe to watch. You know, if you poll a regular consumer, what do you think the answer would be? I would bet that most of them would think it's safe to watch. Um, so now let's look at some malware trends. So the statistics is there. With view media, most people think it's safe to download music, videos, and look at images online. So uh, some interesting malware trends, which I noticed. Um, so a lot of the time, attacks are not targeted. Actually, most of the time. So what that means is um, they're going to just try to infect a large population. They're not going to target a specific organization or specific person. Typically, they just put it out there and hope to lure as many people as they can. Um, the two typical techniques which are used for uh, infecting people's computers um, are social engineering. You need to get a person to click on a video. You need to get a person to listen to music. You need to get a person to look at the image file. There's some degree of social engineering always involved. And another technique which is commonly used is black hat search engine optimization. Um, so what those guys are going to do is they're going to poison Google search results or Yahoo search results. Uh, so you could be searching for an image of Yellowstone National Park, um, as I was about a month ago. And so I searched for Yellowstone National Park in Google Images. And in the first page, you get a bunch of images. And I clicked on one of them, and immediately uh, my antivirus complained that it's a potentially malicious uh, image that could infect my computer. So what the bad guys are going to do is they're going to use a program such as Hrumor, for example, uh, which is going to go and bombard different blogs with hidden links to the particular site that they want people to go to. And then when you search for a particular keyword, such as elections, um, celebrity names, some type of latest events, you're going to come up with a site which looks legit. But when you go there, you're going to look at an image or look at a, a video which is actually going to be designed to uh, infect your computer. Um, so a rough malware breakdown, it's very rough, it's not mathematical, but from my observations, a majority of the attacks usually happen through videos. The next um, uh, category is music and the last 20% is images. Um, and the uh, methods of infection are typically uh, through news site imitations. So I'm going to show you a couple of slides later in the presentation, but typically what people are going to do is they're going to set up lookalike sites which imitate news sites. And you go there, it looks completely like a news site. But it's actually a site designed to infect your computer. Another common uh, way of uh, infecting people using media malware is P2P sites. Everybody shares music, video. So they're going to try to infect video and music files on your computer or upload infected files on a P2P sites, hoping that you're going to download them. And a third component, and again, I'm going to go uh, into more detail about each of these sites is social sites, such as Facebook, MySpace, LinkedIn, well, LinkedIn not so much, but Facebook, MySpace, um, they're going to be usually spread through those type of sites. So um, a little bit of statistics. So if you look at the graph on the right-hand uh, corner by Kaspersky, um, the total number of malicious programs targeting social networking sites is going up significantly. So Kaspersky ran a study, and what they did is they compared um, two ways of getting people to infect their computer. In one way, they sent an email with a malicious attachment to different people. Um, well, they didn't send it, but they studied how likely people are to click on it. So in one way, people received a malicious attachment, such as a holiday greeting card, a PDF file, an image file from your body, and they measured how many of those people would actually open up a greeting card, an image, uh, which contained malware. And it was only 1%, 1% effectiveness. So 1% of the people who received the attachment usually clicked on it. Um, if you compare it with the effectiveness of infecting people through social sites, the difference is staggering. It's 10% effectiveness. So if your friend on Facebook sends you a message saying click here on this link to view a video, or sends you an instant message, or posts it in his profile, 10% of the people click on it, so it's 10% more effective because people on social networking sites feel like they're in real life. They connect to their friends, they talk to their friends, they feel they lose any type of inhibitions, so they're a lot more trustworthy than they are in opening attachments. And that's why social networking sites are a common distribution channel for the uh, 
media malware as well as other type of malware. Breaking news video. So if you look again at statistics, um, according to Kaspersky, during quarter one of 2010, if you take any type of newsworthy event, any type, Gulf oil spill, the release of Avatar movie, Moscow bombings, uh, earthquake in Haiti, recent elections in the United States, any type of newsworthy event has been exploited by the bad guys. What they did is they took that event and set up a lookalike site to talk about that particular event. And people Googled for it and they hit the site and got infected. So uh, setting up breaking news videos, setting up lookalike blogs and lookalike web pages is a very common method of infection these days. And um, according to an article by SC Magazine, out of 100 million blog posts, uh, the ESOF team uncovered about 700,000 malicious um, YouTube lookalike pages. So that's a 0.7% ratio. I did a study of my own. I have a custom tool which I implemented, which uh, looks at the torrent files and downloads a video piece by piece and then checks if the video contains any malicious scripts. So there's an interesting statistic. So I took one movie called Ghost Rider by Roman Polanski. And before the DVD release, so before the DVD actually came out, 10 out of 570 uh, videos didn't contain malware. So 1.75% didn't contain malware. And 98 per, almost 98% of videos that you found online were malicious. After the DVD release, now a DVD release is out there, it's much easier to copy. The statistics obviously improves. Uh, so after the DVD release, 66% of the videos were clean, but 44% were still infected that you, that you could download from torrent sites. Um, image files, so we talked about video, YouTube uh, imitations. Um, now we talk about image files. So um, it's a big component. So typically in the image files, the different approaches you would take uh, one approach is to exploit the uh, GDI buffer overflow vulnerability in some images, which Microsoft did not patch until uh, a couple of years ago. Um, another way was to nestle the PHP script code uh, into the text comments of the images, and some web servers, when you clicked on the image, they would actually start executing the PHP code. So there was a big up, um, spike uh, in the number of malformed images which were designed to take over people's computers. So this is just a high level overview from a bird's eye view. So now let's look at some actual attack vectors. What are the ways uh, that malware uses to infect people's computers? So uh, we talked about three different types, right? So type number one is Microsoft video and music format. Type number two is images. And type number three is YouTube lookalike videos. Uh, so in the case of Microsoft video and music, uh, typically, one of two things is used. I'm going to describe it in more detail. Uh, but typically, they use a URL and exit uh, script injection command, or they abuse the DRM digital rights management uh, functionality, which is present in Microsoft Video and Music Files. Um, th they all do renaming tricks, like rename movie.avi to movie.avi.exe, or rename um, an image to angelina.jpg.exe, but that's not a particularly interesting way of attacking, so we're not going to discuss that. In images, I mentioned the GDI buffer overflows and the PHP uh, commands and comments. In the YouTube videos, uh, YouTube videos use Flash, so the YouTube lookalike videos also use Flash. And Flash has different type of script commands which allow you to access a particular URL, which is being exploited by the attackers. Also, there are a gazillion different Adobe vulnerabilities, which could be used to take over a person's computer. Um, so, as I mentioned, typically for video and music files, social engineering is a component. So when you look at the video or you listen to a music file, you're almost always going to have to do some type of an action. It's not gonna happen automatically without you acting on it. So uh, what the um, malicious uh, media files do is they try to trick you into clicking on a particular box to consent to doing that action. A typical trick is a codec trick where you have to consent to um, downloading a specific codec or accepting the license agreement. And once you click on it, you download the malware on your computer. For images, when you view a malicious image, no user interaction is needed, so you don't need to click anything. It could just take over your computer. For online flash videos, typically some user interaction is needed as well, so you also need to consent to doing something. Um, so let's look at specific uh, case studies, and it's gonna be a little bit um, 
uh, more lucid after you look at the uh, specific case studies of how these things work. So um, fake YouTube videos. So as we know, YouTube uses Flash uh, to play the videos. And interesting piece of news, which, is, which everybody knows, is that Flash has the wor and Adobe has the worst security record in 2009. There are multiple vulnerabilities which are being exploited uh, in Flash. Um, moreover, besides the critical vulnerabilities which Flash has, um, it also supports scripting. So you could be looking at the Flash video and you could embed scripts in the Flash video which are gonna open up a web page or try to contact a particular server or establish some type of a connection. Now, YouTube itself, if you go to youtube.com, they severely restrict the functionality you can put into the Flash videos. So if you create a video with the script commands and upload it to YouTube, they're gonna strip it. So as far as I tried uh, to do it, I didn't succeed. As far as I know, other people also tried to do it. But going to youtube.com itself is in general safe. However, um, what a lot of the guys do is they exploit this trust uh, that you think YouTube is safe, so they're gonna put up a video on a blog or a web page and the video looks identical to YouTube. It looks like it's been embedded from YouTube, but it's not. It's actually just a Flash movie, and it's running without any restrictions, and has script commands embedded into it, has uh, security restrictions lifted. Um, so the next question you might ask is, okay, so what we need to do to trick a person to go to a particular site is to create a video which looks like YouTube. That should take some web designer skills, you know, you need to format it properly, make a web page look good. So you need to have a certain degree of sophistication. In reality, you actually don't, because in a black market, if you look at hacker forums, there are tools which are gonna allow you to do it for you. So here's one example of such tool. It's called YT Fake Creator. The tool is in uh, Spanish, uh, but basically, essentially what you, uh, the font is a little bit slow, but in the second uh, text box from the top, so the second text box right there, you put a message which the person viewing the video is going to get. So the message here is additional plugins are required to display a video. So when the person goes to that uh, web page, he's gonna get a message that plugins are missing. Uh, you can put in other things. So for example, if you look a little bit below, there's a commentary, oh, that the video is great. That's a second text box uh, from the bottom. So you're actually going to create a YouTube video and this tool is gonna create different fake comments. And you look at this blog and you see a lot of people commenting on the video and saying this video is great, you must click here. So you assume that a lot of people looked at the video and you really should do the same. Um, and uh, you know you can configure different types of things. You can configure what type of malware is installed, what's happening. So if you look at how it, hap uh, how it looks, you go to a particular page and it looks identical to YouTube. And here at the bottom you can see commentary which says, oh, that video is great, which the bad guy actually put in there. And on the top, you see a little uh, information message which says additional plugins are required to display all items on this page. So a person goes there and it says, you have JavaScript turned off or an old version of the Adobe Flash Player, click here to get the latest Flash Player. And most people would just click on it and you know, up upgrade their Flash Player and get infected. A lot of these videos, as I mentioned, spread through social sites. So a lot of you have heard of the coop face virus, which spreads through Facebook. And the virus is very sophisticated. Once it takes over a particular person's account, it could write messages to people, it could uh, post on the wall. Uh, you know how on Facebook you have different likes. Um, you can say, I like music, I like Beatles, etc. It could even upload a particular link in the like section, which says, I like, you know, I like, uh, a really cool thing to do in New York City. And when somebody clicks on your friend's page and says, what is that thing? I wanna see what he likes. It's gonna take you to a malicious URL. So what this virus is gonna do is it's gonna often send intriguing messages to friends of people. So you log in one day and you get an intriguing message from your friend which says, candid camera prank. And it's your friend who sent you a message. You click on it, it's a video, and it's a YouTube lookalike video but not really a YouTube video. So once you click on it, it's gonna say, you miss on a particular codec, click here. You click on it because your friend sent it to you and then you infect your computer. Here's another example which I analyzed uh, in great depth. Um, so I mentioned to you the uh, fact that there were a lot of news, news site imitations. 
So the site is actually still active. I think it's still active as of last week. Video.report-cnn.com. I mean, the domain is report-cnn.com, but it looks identical to CNN. A reminder, Aaron Andrews was a United States reporter who was photographed secretly in a hotel room by a perpetrator, and there was a lawsuit against the guy who secretly videotaped her, and apparently a lot of people were searching for that video online because they couldn't get it. And uh, shortly thereafter, the site appeared. Um, and, you know, there was a video of a naked woman. It looks identical to CNN. The site is video.report-cnn.com. And you click on a video and you get a message uh, right there on the bottom which says live video player blocked, that your pop-up blocker blocked access to the video player. Click here to enable the uh, pop-up. And there was a lot of interesting things about this particular example. It did some novel things. First of all, typically when you click on these videos, the video doesn't play. In this case, when you clicked on the pop-up blocker, the video actually played and you saw some type of a woman undressing in a hotel room, and then the video finished playing and you went about your business. You didn't notice anything. And a lot of the time the uh, attackers are sloppy, so the video doesn't play, so you get suspicious. Here the video played, but it also infected your computer. And uh, depending on the computer, depending on the region uh, where you're coming from, it would download different types of malware on your computer. So it would detect if you're using a Mac, and if you're using a Mac, it would download OSX Jollof Trojan, and if you're using a Windows, it would download one of several different Trojans on your computer. So if you look at the HTML source code of the site, um, you know, I looked at the source code, and the source code is just using iframes to embed the content from CNN website into the site. The only single difference about this particular site is that command right there, which says embed SRC HTTP media player for opd.com. So everything is embedded from CNN, everything is legit, except that video in the middle. And the video is served from media player for opd.com. So I got curious, I did a little bit more analysis, and a lot of people fell for this. If you look at the traffic report, um, it's right there on the top, video report CNN.com. There are a lot of sites on Yahoo, Bing in particular, Google still didn't, uh, Google did a little bit of cleaning up, but a lot of the sites actually link to this particular video. So on Bing, there are about 382 sites linking to that particular site. So you would go to one of the sites and it's often a legitimate site. It's often a legitimate site. In a comment section, somebody is going to say, oh, check here on CNN to look at the video. And you know, if you do a simple lookup through Multigo of the media player for opd.com site, you're gonna find out that the guy actually created a lot of uh, similar sites dedicated to sex, breaking news, online gambling, looking for jobs. So the same guy created a lot of sites. You would go look for a job or look for uh, online casino and you would potentially get infected because the same guy created a network of sites. Um, and by the way, he was really smart. Not only is he downloading different type of uh, malware on your computer, but they also, they use all kinds of interesting mitigation techniques. So when I was first analyzing it, I, I was not careful enough. I was using my own computer to access it, uh, access the particular site, uh, which is media player for opd.com. And after a while, I was getting completely clean pages, which looked completely legit. And I thought, well, this is strange. I know it was serving malware. So then I fired up the Tor client, changed my IP address, um, looked again, and obviously I got the malware. So they actually remember the IP addresses of the people who hit it. And if you hit it too many times, they figure out you're trying to analyze it, so they're gonna start serving completely normal pages to you. So um, example number two, ASF exploits. Uh, so ASF is a Microsoft uh, format for videos and music files. So typically um, the files um, have an extension ASF, WMA, WMV. So these are just video and music files. Now the interesting part about uh, Windows is if you rename one of these files into AVI, MP3, whatever, whatever usual video format you have, and you double click on it, it's still gonna play, but it's gonna interpret it as an ASF format. Now, ASF format, the difference between a lot of other video formats and ASF is that ASF has rich functionality. It allows you to embed script commands inside of it. So, um, and by the way, not only Windows supports it, 
There are a lot of players, real player, MP, M player, Zoom, Flip for Mac, QuickTime, Linux, FF, MPEG. So it's not just Windows, which is Vault, which has these uh, issues. Um, and uh, two interesting parts about the format is, number one, it allows you script commands. So you can actually embed script commands to download a particular web page using the URL and exit in your movie or a music file. And also it has a framework for digital rights management. And a format is pretty simple. It's just a bunch of blocks. Um, and byte sequences are identified by a GUID. So you have a GUID which says, okay, the next thing which follows is a script command. The next thing which follows is a video block, uh, is a block of video bytes. And so parsing it is actually really simple. Uh, so um, I'll talk about URL and exit in a second, but DRM, uh, there's another interesting part about DRM. So DRM is digital rights management. It's a framework which Microsoft put around their files. And typically what, and it allows you to control the distribution of your file. So typically what's gonna happen is, uh, if you look at the box in the right hand corner, what the person is going to do, you are an author of a video. So you're going to encode the video uh, with particular licensing information, and then a consumer tries to play the video. And a consumer is that box on the very bottom. And the consumer is gonna try to play the video, and what the video is going to do is it's going to instruct the media player to go and contact a licensing server. And a licensing server is that box on the right with a key in it. So the media player is going to send a request to the licensing server and get back some type of response and decide if the video can be played or not. So there are a couple of really interesting things about the DRM um, protocol here. Number one, uh, a lot of communication is actually happening over HTTP. It's not encrypted. Uh, point number two, the licensing server can actually send an HTML message back to the media player, which is going to be displayed to the end user. And the reasoning behind it is you click on a protected video and you need the license to play the video you want to display a message which looks nice to the user. For example, put an avatar logo in the pop-up box which you're presenting. So the uh, licensing server is actually gonna, you know, is gonna send you that HTML message and the media player is going to blindly display it on the user's computer. And there's no authentication happening between the media player and the licensing server. So there's no authentication. So you could set up your own web server and point the URL to go to your web server, and the web server is going to return to you HTML, and that HTML is gonna be displayed on a user's computer without any question. So that's the attack scenario. So, um, so the basic way it's going to work is an attacker is gonna set up a web server, and the web server is gonna return malicious HTML, and uh, there's going to be a DRM uh, marker in the video, you click on a video, and the player is gonna contact the malicious DRM server and it's gonna tell you what, what HTML to display. So there are multiple examples of Trojans which use it. There's an example of a WMV downloader A. There's an example of a WMV downloader B. They could tell you to install a codec or download a legitimate license. So here's an example. You click on a uh, music file containing Ludwig van Beethoven's Symphony Number no. 9. You play it and all of a sudden in the middle of a music you get a pop-up that you're missing a particular codec. You just listen to a little bit of a symphony, so you want to listen to the rest. So you click on it and it continues playing, but you just infected your computer. Here's another example. Instead of a missing codec, you could actually threaten the user to accept the license terms. So this type of malware was very smart. You downloaded the video or music file, you clicked on it, it created a pop-up box on the left, which says copyright violation, copyrighted content detected. And it actually gave a link to a site which they set up which says icpponline.com. And the site looked legit and it said, you know, you downloaded piracy and it's against the law. If you don't want us to pursue legal action, click here and pay $100 fine. And it looked completely legit so a lot of people would go and pay $100 fine and play the video and the attackers would collect the money. So example of social engineering. Um, so that's how DRM abuse, abuse uh, is used. Now, URL and exit. Um, so, the script commands inside Microsoft video and image files. So, if you look at the website, there's a snippet which says, the reason for script commands is to enhance users' viewing experience. So, the idea is that you're gonna be viewing a video, and in the middle of a video, you might wanna pop up a website to a user, 
to enhance the user's viewing experience. I can't really necessarily imagine a scenario where it would be a good idea, but there might be. Uh, the bad guys in the meantime are actively abusing it. So in the middle of a video, they're gonna inject a URL and exit command, which is gonna bring up a particular website to a user as he watches a video or listens to music. So here's an example, um, and the picture is due to ScanSafe. They did a really good analysis of this Win32 ASF hijacker. Um, so um, they get the credit for this. But the basic idea is it's actually a really interesting type of malware. And let's assume your computer is infected with this malware. What this malware is going to do is it's going to search your computer for all the video and music files in ASF format. If it finds uh, some music and video files not in the ASF format, it's going to automatically convert them to ASF format. Then it's going to eject URL and exit commands into your music and video files in the middle of the movie or music files. And then what it's going to do is it's going to disable the URL and exit functionality, the protection technique which I talk about, on your computer. And the reason it does that is that when you view this video and music files, they're gonna look completely normal to you. You're not gonna notice anything different. But the reasoning is you're going to use P2P uh, or Torrent uh, to share these files. So you're gonna be sharing these files with other people and these files on your computer are gonna be infected. And you're gonna be infecting other people's computers without knowing it. If you look at the size difference, it's very subtle. You know, for example, Queen uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, it was 83003 kilobytes. After infection, it's 8546 kilobytes. It's only 500 kilobyte footprint. So um, alternatively, instead of you sharing the music and video files yourself, attackers could upload videos um, themselves. So they could poison the search results, as I mentioned, uh, and upload the videos they created. Now the good news about these videos is that usually they're pretty lazy. So they're not gonna inject the URL and exit command in the middle of a video, they're gonna inject it in the beginning. And the video itself is gonna be fake. So it's really easy to detect you've been duped. You download the video of a movie, you click on it, and you can't see it because it's not a real video. So in this case, uh, detecting them becomes pretty easy. So, um, and when you download these videos, they do some simple engineering techniques. Sometimes they're gonna do something as simple as include a readme.txt link file, which is really a link. You click on it, you infect yourself. More often than not, they're gonna just, you know, they're just gonna try to use the URL and exit injection. And uh, it's the same idea as with DRM. You click on a video, it's gonna pop up a box saying Windows Media Player. Click here to download. So uh, that's the video files. So the last part uh, about the case studies is the JPEG GDI exploit. So that's the image files exploit. Um, and this is actually old news, but it's still being used because a lot of, people's, a lot of people don't patch their computers. So it's still being very active. Uh, but back in 2004, there was a problem announced in the GDI driver that processes the way JPEG images are displayed. Uh, it was a buffer overflow, and there's a similar exploit effect in PNG uh, images on Firefox, Mozilla browsers. Uh, and the basic idea is you double-clicked on an image, it used the buffer overflow, and it could establish a remote shell. So just by clicking on the image and viewing it, you would infect your computer and somebody would take uh, ownership of it. It first appeared on several Usenet groups that contained erotic images, images of Angelina Jolie, um, and uh, it's still being actively used. So for example, if you search for Yellowstone National Park or Angelina Jolie and flip through a couple of Google image pages and click on every one of them, you're inevitably going to hit one of the infected files within the first six pages. Um, exploits are readily available, so if you go to Exploit Database or any of the other sites, there are a gazillion exploits exploiting uh, GDI buffer overflow. Um, so it's not a particularly clever attack, but a lot of people fall for it because they think viewing an image is nothing sp special and can't harm you. Uh, so we talked about different types of attacks, now let's talk about detection and prevention, and that's going to uh, conclude the talk. So I mean, the rule number one in security is turn off unneeded features. And we have a gazillion features which we have enabled in our operating systems which are not being used. So for example, to disable the URL and exit script functionality and most of your videos are still going to play. Nobody, like, I don't know any good videos or music files which need to open up a website in the middle of a video. So it's safe to disable it. The URL and exit command is enabled by default. 
So there's a registry key called HK Current Users Software Microsoft Media Player Preferences, and you go there and you disable it. And it's not really gonna break things because there are very few videos which use this. Um, to disable DRM auto downloads, you can go to options of uh, media player and you click on privacy and you click on the highlighted yellow bar which says download usage. So you see download usage rights automatically when I play or, uh, when I play the file. So by default, it's gonna be enabled. When you play a file, if the file is protected, it's gonna go contact a particular server and download information from that server. If it's a malicious file which tells you to go contact a particular malicious server, it's gonna do that. So this is a little bit more tricky because there are some DRM protected legitimate files, but what this does is it's actually going to prompt you. Do you want me to go and download this license? So at least you're gonna be informed. In DRM, um, if it's disabled, it could download the stuff without you knowing. There's a GDI scan tool. Uh, just Google for it, you're gonna find it. It's gonna scan your hard drive for vulnerable versions of GDI plus DLL. If you opt to Service Pack 2, then that should solve it automatically. Um, and the final part is a custom tool. How do you detect malicious ASF files? So malicious video music files which use this URL and exit or DRM abuse. Um, so I have a custom tool which I implemented. It's still in alpha stages, but um, the basic idea of how it works is very simple. So if you look at the structure of a malicious video on the right, usually it looks like this. There's a real video in blue, then there's a command go to URL, which says go to a particular malicious URL, download stuff from it and display it to the user. There's some more real video and then there's a padding at the end. Because a lot of the time uh, bad guys are gonna be lazy, so they're gonna create a small video, a very small video, but you're gonna be suspicious if you download a two megabyte video of a three hour file. So they're gonna pad the rest of the file with junk to make it look like it's 700 megabytes or more. Um, so the structure is very simple. So what the tool is going to do is it's just going to look for that particular script command, which says URL and exit or LA info. So if you open up the file in a hex editor, here's what it's going to look. So in the beginning, there's a legitimate file. In the red, I circled URL and exit, HTTP freak torrents info locked. That's the malicious site. So it goes and calls to that site. And then if you look at the bottom of a, of a file on the right hand corner, it's just padding, there's nothing in there. Um, so to look for it, it's pretty simple to implement. Uh, one particular complication is that if you think about torrent, the way that torrent downloads work is um, it's not a sequential download. Uh, torrent is a distributed hash table, right? It assumes that different people have different pieces. So it's gonna go look up in the, con in the whatever, glossary. Um, and uh, send out requests for different pieces of the file uh, to different types of people. So what I needed to do is I needed to tweak the download to be sequential. It's gonna be slower because it's not gonna download random pieces. It's gonna download piece number one, number two, number three, etc. But after you tweak that, the rest of the change is very easy. So you tweak the download to be sequential and then you just use a basic uh, string search, boy or more string search, uh, to look for any URL and exit or LA info commands. Once you find the command in the video, uh, what you do is you extract the URL to which that command points. And then I take that URL and I send a request to the servers of Web of Trust to tell me how trustworthy is that particular URL. If that URL is not trustworthy, I'm gonna claim that the video is malicious. And uh, this is the URL where the tool is available. Uh, but you know it's still in alpha stage, but uh, I uploaded the Python code uh, over there. Uh, and if you look at the output, uh, here's an output. So for example, I'm downloading the Ghostwriter uh, AVI file. So it says sequential torrent download. So it's downloading pieces zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm gonna say, okay, now search for malicious uh, script commands in the video. And it found that there's a URL and exit command starting at position 1939. So in the beginning of the video file, just 2000 bytes afterwards. And then it extracts a URL, freak torrents info log three, and it checks the reputation of a URL using web of trust. And you know, we get a uh, non-trustworthy URL, so we're not gonna proceed. Um, Another interesting idea about how to detect malicious files was proposed by uh, Trusted Source. So this is an area for future research. 
Uh, but they had a pretty cool idea. They said, if you think about a video, it has particular properties. When you inject uh, text commands into a video, it's going to change the entropy of the byte stream because text, com text commands use just alphabetic, alphanumeric characters. They're predictable, so you know, by looking for the entropy deviations in the byte stream, you can detect sometimes if a video is malicious. Also, if you look at the end of the video, usually the video is just padded uh, to make it large enough. So the padding is usually repetitive, so it's not gonna have enough entropy, right? So uh, you could use that type of uh, um, criteria to detect malicious videos as well. So uh, conclusion, uh, staying away from shady or illegal websites is not necessarily gonna keep you safe this day. A lot of the time you're actually gonna be infected by going to news sites which look completely legitimate. Or maybe you're gonna download a music file from your friend and it's also going to potentially infect your computer. Uh, usually the good news is some type of human interaction is needed. It's not just gonna take over your computer, you have to click on something. So being aware of tricks like missing coded codec trick, missing license, already puts you on top of a game. Uh, another recommendation is disable unneeded functionality. Go and change this registry setting on your computer. That's gonna solve a lot of the problems. And you can download and play with the video searcher tool to look for malicious scripts. It's still alpha, but if anybody wants to play with the code and contribute, you're more than welcome. Um, so um, this is it, and I think we have five minutes for questions. Exactly, well done. Yeah, five minutes for questions. So uh, I hope you're scared enough to actually follow his advice. <laughs> yes, any questions? I think there's a question on the back. Uh, do you have an, uh, a checklist for users, um, uh, what they can do to, to prevent these things? Um, I mean, we, we've heard uh, today how to disable this function, the URL and exit function, but what can I tell other people? Um, is there any, any kind of tool which checks if, if uh, you could be vulnerable or if, the, uh, if you're still vulnerable to the uh, GDI uh, JPEG exploit? That's a good question. Um, so um, regarding GDI exploits specifically, yeah, there's a tool which I uh, mentioned. Uh, so there's a GDI scan, plus, a scan tool, so you can just Google for it, and it's gonna scan your hard drive and look for vulnerable copies of the DLL. Um, but if you, up to, if you upgrade your patches, if you up to Service Pack 2, you're gonna be safe, most likely. Uh, regarding the other attacks, uh, you're not gonna be safe. Uh, so what I would tell your users is, um, education, right? Tell them that it's not necessarily safe to just download videos and music files in a work environment. At home, you can do whatever you want as long as you're aware, but in a work environment, you need to tell people about the risks and educate them. Um, so that's really the best protection. Some antiviruses detected, but not many. So like for example, McAfee, um, it, detects, uh, it detected the WMV downloader when I, when I downloaded a malicious WMV file, but a lot of the other things are not detected. So you know, if you wanna do a simple check without downloading a tool, and if you're a tech savvy person, what I do is I download a video, I open up the video in a hex editor, and I just scroll down like a few pages and see if there's padding, and if there's URL and exit command in the beginning. If there is, then it's likely that you downloaded a malicious video. If there's not, then most likely it's safe. Any more questions? Um, what about the already downloaded files that um, are on the hard, on the hard disks? Uh, any scanner for that? I mean, you fire up a hex editor and you know what to look for, but... Yeah, uh, so uh, this video searcher tool, uh, I mean, it's still in alpha stage, so I need to work on it a little bit more, but... Um, this video searcher tool, uh, so when I said alpha, the part which is alpha is actually downloading the torrent pieces because uh, torrent download is a little bit sequential, so I did, is, is a little tricky to get right, so I didn't get all the details correctly, but on a hard disk, it should work actually well. You can just point it to a particular file and it's gonna look for those script commands and tell you if they're present or not, so that would be pretty easy uh, to do. Uh, but 
yeah, I mean, I, so I think the good part is if you already have downloaded things on your computer, usually they're going to prompt you to go install something else, uh, but not always. You know, not always. So there's no perfect answer. There's no site, uh, report site where the, um, those URLs that you find that you're being redirected to are to be seen? So uh, some of these, so there are some report sites, but for video and music files, unfortunately, there are no easy report sites that you can go to at the moment. It's still a very, you know, it's still a very unexplored area, like a lot of people, and the goal of this talk was to raise attention to it, but it's still, seems like bad guys, again, ahead of the curve, they're using it actively, but there are very few security researchers at the moment who are actually looking into this. Any questions? Are users using, for example, VLC safe from those kind of attacks? Because I think they re-implement their, their decoders and everything, so they probably don't support URL and exit and those kind of functionalities. Do you know? Yeah, I mean, somebody asked me a similar question. Um, so um, I don't know if that I don't know if the top of my head. It depends if it implements the full stack of ASF. Right, so if it implements URL and exit commands, uh, then no, you're not safe. If it doesn't, then you are. So like I said, there are many different types of players affected. It's just not all player. So the players I listed, they support ASF. So if you're using like MMPEG, uh, etc., then you're gonna be vulnerable. But that particular one, I don't know about. Okay, thanks. Well, if there's no further questions, then uh I would like to ask, thank you first of all for this very interesting talk to raise awareness to upcoming difficulties. Thank you.